What is up guys? Today I have a very exciting yet controversial video planned for y'all today because today we're gonna go over Jeremy Fragrance's Fragrance One Collection. That is right, I have over here Office for Men, Date for Men, I even have his most expensive fragrance, Black Tide. And I also even have his unisex fragrance, which he markets as Club for Men, but called unisex. Not sure why he did that. Either way, I met Jeremy a couple of years ago. I'll put a picture up here. He's a really great dude, but this video is not about what I think of him, but what I think about the juice in these colognes and whether it's worth the money. This is gonna be my unbiased, honest opinion. And Stay till the very end if you want to know whether I think you should buy these colognes and if they're worth the money. Let's get right into it. Let's start with his most popular and his first release, Office for Men. What I really liked about this collection is that it takes the guesswork out for men because a lot of the things that fragrance reviewers do is they tell you what occasion to wear what fragrance. It's, it's kind of complicated if you don't know anything about this entire niche. So he took the guesswork out and it was like, you want office scent? Wear an office one. You want a date scent? It's called date. Let's talk about Office for Men though because I think it's a really, really well done fragrance. I, I genuinely believe it's great great fragrance. And here's why. If you've smelled this, if you got on your nose on this before, it just smells like Creed Aventus and Dior Sauvage and Blue de Chanel in a bottle. That's the best way to describe it. It's it's a perfect scent for summertime. It's a perfect scent for your fresh and clean shower gel type going out scent. It has like the citrus notes, the ambergris, the thing is grapefruit. It's just your typical fresh and clean scent and he just does it really, really well. It's one of those things like if, it's, if it ain't broke, why fix it, right? And I think the designer he got for this, the master perfumer, was Alberto Marias, the same guy who made Aqua de Gio, the most famous, successful selling fragrance of all time from Armani. So I'm not surprised it smells similar to that. You know, it's your typical fresh and clean scent. The best thing about this fragrance, which is why I think it's worth the money. Last I checked, it's like 200 bucks if you get a coupon or something. I think it's worth the money because out of all the fragrances I have, this one lasts the longest. There's no other fragrance that comes close to this even. Like this lasts on my skin for more than 24 hours. Like this lasts on my clothes for 48 hours plus. And I'll put this on, I'll wash my clothes, and then I'll take it out of the dryer and it'll still smell like faint, faint remnants of this. So anytime I need to go all day and I don't want to refresh, I'm not coming home. For example, I'm going 10 a.m. and I'm not coming back till 4 a.m. I wear this fragrance because I know even till 4 a.m. I'll be smelling as strong as a, I, I would when I put it on the first place. Fresh scents don't last this long. If you want a one and done clean, fresh fragrance, if you're choosing between Creed Aventus and this fragrance, I would say, man, get this one. Like, I know that's a crazy thing to say, but Creed Aventus is really good, but this one takes what works in Creed Aventus, but just makes it better. He takes already successful colognes that have worked and proven in the market over and over for compliment getters. I just took the best qualities from all of them, made them all beast mode, and then put them in a bottle. Is the presentation, man? Is the marketing and all that a bit aggressive? Is Jeremy Fragrance peddling this product a little obnoxious? Sure. But the juice, 100% guaranteed worth it. I think this is a the great fragrance for anyone who wants a long lasting fragrance that doesn't have one in their collection. His second release was Date for Men. And man, I, like I said, I love how intuitive the names are for all these fragrances because this smells exactly like how a date fragrance should smell. Sweet, seductive, sexy, leathery scent, perfect for the winter and fall time. For the summertime, I mean, you can get by. It smells in a nutshell if Jean-Paul Gaultier's Ultra Male had a baby with Parfums de Marley Layton and maybe Spice Bomb. That's one of the ways to put it. And if you put a more stronger leathery note in this. So he's taking the best parts of all these fragrances and putting them together, making a Frankenstein baby, giving them somehow beast mode performance. Because once again, this one lasts on my skin for 40 hours or plus. I'm not kidding, bro. Like this shit's, this shit's out of the world crazy in terms of performance. The reason why that I wouldn't recommend this, there's a lot of other fragrances on the market that do it better and a bit more unique. I like Parfums de Marley's apple note. I like the fact that Bison has that cardamom, seductive, sexy note. I like that Jean-Paul Gaultier is like extra sickly sweet bubblegum taste scent. And he kind of just dulls a lot of those and just takes the popular parts of all of them and just puts them together for the Frankenstein baby. But I just feel if you're spending a lot of money on something like this, it's rather best to go towards a fragrance that knows what it's supposed to do. This just smells like a Frankenstein of like 10 partying, clubbing, going out, dating fragrances. There's a lot of fragrances on the market, which I can recommend. I mean, just for starters, I've done a video of the sexiest men's colognes uh, that women find irresistible. All those are really the starting point that I think do their job very, very well. A lot of them are way cheaper than this one because I think this is over $200 as well. So yes, I think there generally are better date fragrances on the market and this one doesn't get the job done in terms of that. And I, I think your money's better spent elsewhere in terms of a date fragrance. Now, his third and most expensive release is Black Tie. And bro, I'm not even gonna hide it. This is my favorite fragrance of his entire life because it's just so freaking weird. It's like the craziest fragrance I've ever smelled because there's nothing in the world that smells like it. Leather, like straight, like leather jacket leather. Like it smells straight up like leather and mixed it with orange. I guess someone took an orange peel and rubbed it aggressively on your black leather jacket. That's what this smells like. And then just sprinkle in some, I don't know, like 
oud. I think I spell oud in there. How often do I wear it? Not that often because it's such an aggressive scent. This is not a compliment getter. I'm telling you right now. This one is for the fragrance lovers, for the niche people, for the people who have so many other fragrances that they want something very different and unique. It reminds me of like a black tie occasion. Like this is what I think um, like a George Clooney or a James Bond would wear and he would rock it really fucking well because it's so aggressively masculine, yet it's so fresh and clean. And the clashing of those two scents almost makes your brain explode because it just doesn't make sense why it works that way. When you have so many fragrances and everything kind of smells ultimately the same at some level, having a banger fragrance like this that nothing smells in the world like is kind of cool and unique. But I would not buy this if I were you. Unless you have 20 fragrances, don't buy this because it's not worth the investment. I think this is also like at least two, three hundred dollars. This is the most expensive one if I remember clearly. I bought it because I wanted to, I, I'm into fragrances. I wanted to see what the hype was about. And I would not wear this on a plane. I would not wear this at work. I would not wear this at most clubbing situation. This is most likely for the time when you do dress up. This smells stupid on you if you're wearing a t-shirt and shorts. This smells absolutely stupid even if you're wearing like a, a short sleeve and jeans. Like that you need to be dressed up a bit in order for this to actually make sense. It's a very specific occasion fragrance, but this is the one that I, I would say is my favorite from this collection. Obviously, it's not the one I get the most compliments from, but that's not what I'm here for. I'm here for the fragrance itself, the juice, the artistic quality at this point. If I want compliments, I already made a bit on the best autumn fragrances. I already know what I want if I get compliments. But I've reached past the stage now where it's like, I also want to embrace the uniqueness of fragrances. And this is this is one of those that gets the job done with that regards. But like I said, not worth the money for 99% of you watching. Now let's talk about unisex because he really pushed unisex as a cologne that would be for clubbing. His thing was he was gonna call it magnet for men because it makes people magnetic or addicted to you. But then he also started calling it unisex. I don't know, his marketing message was really screwed up because he would call it clubbing for men and then unisex for men or unisex in general. But yeah, I guess unisex for <laughs> everybody. That's that's his like tagline, but my camera can focus, yeah. So I don't really know what his intent was with this, but I went with the mindset of his initial marketing message, which was clubbing for men. I can see why uh, it's unisex because it's definitely a bit feminine. This is straight up Jean-Paul Gaultier's Ultra Male on steroids. It basically takes Jean-Paul Gaultier and just knocks it up to the higher level. That's all this fragrance is. That's that's literally all it is. Nothing else unique about it. And Jean-Paul Gaultier is, <laughs> Ultra Male is the king of clubbing. I've, I've called it and said it many times. And I have done a video recently about, uh, I think it's five fragrances that make you feel like an extrovert. That's one with one of the list because it really does make you feel like an extra when you wear something that sweet, that strong, that powerful. I would not get this, man. Like it's, it's, it's literally ultra male. It's literally ultra male. There's nothing different, nothing unique about it. Nothing sexier or different about it. It just turns up and cranks all the things you like about ultra male even more, which honestly at some level it does become a bit more feminine because ultra male is a bit of a unisex type-ish fragrance. So if you are like a really metrosexual guy, flamboyant guy, a guy who does party and likes to go out a lot and wants to stand out, I'd wear this, but at the same time, this is not a masculine scent by any means either. And I'd rather wear Ultra Mel than this. So this was one that I actually do kind of regret. Overall, I think um, don't buy it unless you, once again, have already like 20 fragrances and you wanna try something new. So if you just skipped here because you wanna know what I think is worth buying or what's not buying, or you want a quick recap of my thoughts, Office for Men, I'm 100% is a good buy. It takes the best of Creed events. It's Dior Sauvage, um, Bleu de Chanel, mixes it, makes a Frankenstein baby, and makes it absolutely beast mode, which is really rare for a fresh and clean scent. So I think this is a great buy. Date for Men, I don't know, man. I don't think it's worth the buy. I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze. It's really expensive, and a lot of other fragrances do it well. Though it is a good scent, there's better date scents than this out there. The other performance is beast mode. I think there's better ones out there. This one. Unless you have 25 fragrances, don't buy it because this literally smells like a black leather jacket and someone just rubbed orange juice all over it. I think it's a fantastic fragrance because I own 20, like 50 plus fragrances. But if you own only one, two, three, four, five fragrances, don't buy this because I do think this will make your head explode and make other people's head explode for the right reasons because it's just so freaking fantastic and unique. But you're not gonna get compliments. It can be inoffensive. It's very out there and it's very, very different. So this is one that you're probably not gonna reach for most of the time. For unisex, just don't buy this, bro. This is literally a waste of money, waste of time. It's not even worth the time time to add to your cart because it's just Ultra Mills GPG uh, turned up on steroids and it makes it so sweet. It is almost more feminine than masculine. So I hope you guys found this video valuable or at least entertaining. Like I said earlier in this video, I did meet Jeremy. He was a really great guy. I met him at Menfluential Conference in 2020, I think. I met him twice actually, 2019 and 2020. I met him, I met his brother. They're super great guys. They're Jeremy's the same guy off and on camera. He's really magnetic, very personable, full of energy, bro. I think, he, I think before his speech, he did like 20 push-ups on stage 
Asia with one hand for absolutely no reason. He's the one, one of the reasons I started learning a lot about fragrances and got to the fragrance community. He even took my number because he was like, yo, when I'm in New York, I would love to hit you up. Let's hang out. Even though I think he was doing that because he just wanted to make me feel special and important in that situation. So I stopped watching his videos, I want to say like a few years ago when he started speaking things that were a bit out of the ordinary, let's say. Uh, don't know what's going on with him. I don't know if it's like a marketing ploy or a tactic to get more followers or views. Not really sure, man. Um, I'm not in a situation or place to comment on it, but uh, yeah, dude, I, I really, really, really think he's been a massive, massive contributor to the fragrance community online. And uh, without him, I personally definitely would not be as into fragrances as I am now. But uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know <laughs> what's going on with him, but uh, I hope, I hope everything's okay with him. That's what I'll leave it at. If you made it this far into the video, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for sticking around. My name is Sid Shavla. If you're new here and I drop videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and all things grooming, personal development, and productivity. Uh, I would love to grow this channel. I'm a new YouTuber. It's really tough for new YouTubers to scale on this platform. It's so saturated with a lot of other people. I'm on a goal to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year. I know it's a crazy goal, but with your help, I could get close to that goal and maybe even achieve it. So it would mean the world, world to me if you could hit that subscribe button, uh, give me one of these thumbs ups, like buttons, and uh, hit the notifications bell because I'm dropping videos left and right, trying to give you guys as much as value as possible. Uh, and let me know in the comments, what do you guys think of Jeremy Fragrance? Uh, what do you think of his fragrances? If you have any and help the community know let's start some conversations down there because i think it's an important topic to discuss i'm gonna loop up two videos here uh my most popular fragrance videos and i will see you guys in the next one